Hi, how you doing? Aaron here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to diagnose and replace your transfer case shift motor on your 97 through 2002 F-150, F-250, and um, Expedition. Also true for the Lincoln Navigator as well. Um, so some of the symptoms might be it's stuck in four-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive low and won't return down to um, two-wheel drive. Pretty simple operation. There's simply three bolts around the motor itself and one on this little tab right here where you're uh, not really hard to get off but uh, let's go ahead and show you the tools that you will need to do the job all right now the tools that we'll need to replace the motor is a 10 millimeter this is a 3 8 drive uh, ratchet 10 millimeter deep ball socket you're gonna be using a power ratchet as well a little bit faster um, some needle nose pliers you're gonna need this to get into your transfer case and manually move uh, the little um, shaft to put it in, in too high. Um, and a pick, this is gonna be uh, used to um, take apart the connector and take apart the pins. We're gonna be moving some wires around um, and I'll show you exactly what that is in here uh, in just a moment. All right, so here we are in the back of the uh, transfer case underneath the vehicle and you're gonna see a large connector. This is the connector that houses the wires that goes to the transfer case shift motor. And at the bottom of the connector, I don't know how well it's coming out, but uh, you're gonna find two wires that are larger than the rest of the wires. One of the wires is gonna be yellow, the other is gonna be orange. And this is the wires, these are the wires that supply power to turn the motor. Um, you know, depending on the switch location, one might be the ground, one might be power. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tap into these wires. Uh, one end of your test light is going to be on the yellow, the other end is going to be on the ground, and turn the switch. If the light, test light does light up, then you know that your motor is getting proper power. If not, you're going to have to look into a fuse or a switch issue. Um, that's one way to test it. Another way to test it is to take the connector apart and these bottom two pins right here um, they're going to be labeled 14 and 15 that's the circuit you can also directly tie into here because these wires are coming directly from the vehicle this side's going to the motor so I actually did already remove the motor and if you are in four wheel drive here's a little tip or trick to get you down the road you're going to see a couple markings on here four low which is right there, four high and, and two high. This little nipple right here is actually what turns in the transfer case. So if you're stuck in four low or four high, remove your motor and you can take some pliers and turn this triangle shaped pin to the pointed position that you wanna be in. Obviously probably too high to get you home. Um, so just remember that uh, if you are stuck, you can turn this. If you can't turn it, we're looking at an issue with the transfer case itself. I went ahead to remove the motor and the connector from the vehicle. Uh, one note is that you're gonna have to remove a speed sensor here with a 10 millimeter wrench or socket sensor here and cut this wire right here. It goes to the top of your transfer case. You could just splice this back in when you go to reinstall your new one. All right, so here we have both transfer case motors out on the bench, the old one and the new one. As you can see, unfortunately, our, our new transfer case motor does not come with the speed sensors. Uh, and we're gonna to need to tie those in, but don't panic because it's actually a really easy job to take out the pins and the connector and the sensors and swap them over to the new one. First thing you're gonna to need to do is remove this red locking tab with your needle nose pliers. Take that out and set it aside. All right, once your red locking tab is out, the next thing to do is take the locks off of the pins. And uh, I'm trying to get a clear picture of here, but each pin has a locking tab on the side of it. And once you get to that locking tab, all you do is you push over. And when you push over on the locking tab, push down a little bit to get it out of the way, as you can see there. And then once that occurs, you can actually take your um, little pick and you can very gently pick, uh, put your pick on the pin and push it down. And you'll be able to, sorry about that you'll be able to get them out of there. So do that to all the wires very carefully. Um, again, push that lock tab over and you'll be able to take out those pins and transfer them to your new one.
One additional tip is once you get a pin out, do it one at a time and take your new connector and just plug it into the location on the new connector where it goes that way. You don't have to label anything and don't mess up any of the wire locations on the connector. All right, once you've transferred over your sensors and put the wires back in the pin, go ahead and take the wires to the back of the connector and give them a little, little tug test to make sure they won't come out of the connector itself and put in your red locking tab. Inspect the wires pretty good. Sometimes uh, these wires can become bare, um, just like this whole sensor was. Uh, so that if you need to make any repairs, now's a good time to do it while it's out of the vehicle. Now it's about time to throw the new motor back in. One thing to note is the orientation of the slot. You may need to mess around with your switch, your four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive switch to get this orientation in the correct way. You cannot turn this by hand. I've tried. Uh, it's in there really good. I was worried I was going to damage the motor, so make sure the orientation is correct, and that way it'll go over that nipple and it'll bolt right on. All right, once you have your motor uh, shift motor back in, go ahead and put all your electrical connectors in and but connect the, the, the one wire that goes up top that we had to had to uh, splice in. So um, make sure these sensors are in all the way. It's really easy for them to get cockeyed and they will leak. So make sure they are in all the way and let's test her out. All right, just got back from a test drive and I do have all functions back, which is nice and they all returned to too high, so we're good there. I uh, hope this has helped you guys out. If it has, please like and sub subscribe or like and subscribe anyways. Um, leave something in the comment section if you guys do this. Uh, let me know how it went and if you have any questions, I'm free to help. So have a great time guys and see you next time.